In this tutorial I will show you how I made this toast camper using the free software Blender. Start by selecting the default cube and pressing Ctrl2 to subdivide it. Scale it and add loop cuts to approximate the shape of the toaster. For the metal ornaments, copy one of the loop cuts and press P to separate the selection. Tap into edit mode of the new object, select everything and press F to fill in the face. Then press E to extrude and adjust the size and scale of the ornament. Then copy it two more times. For the slits and other cutouts of the toaster we are going to use booleans. To do that, add the shape of the cutout and change the display to wired in the object menu. Then select the toaster and add the boolean modifier. Then in the object, select the cutout shape we just made. Repeat that process for the other cutouts as well. I beveled the slit at the side and fixed the topology, which led to the boolean modifier not working properly. This usually has to do with the normals who tend to get flipped by fixing the topology. For the wheel at the side, add another cylinder and change the vertices to 24. Then select every second edge and scale them down on the z and the x axis. Now scale it to the right size, add a subdivision modifier and add some loop cuts for support. Add a second cylinder for the detail in the middle. For the wheels add another cylinder and then put a mirror modifier on it. Now model the details of the car with the inset and extrude. Select all the sharp edges and then bevel them by pressing Ctrl B. Add a subdivision modifier to make the shape smooth. Play around with the scale and placement until it looks right. Add another cube for the support legs of the toaster. For the door, add another cube with subdivisions. Adjust the shape by scaling it and adding loop cuts. Then model out the details of the door. For the window, I deleted the bottom vertice and used the cross fill option to close the mesh. Then delete the interfaces and connect the inner edges with bridge edge loops.
Now model a door handle using the same technique. And lastly, add a window pane. Then model another window using the same technique. As you can see, the uneven topology messes with the subdivision modifier. To fix that, use the knife tool and divide the mesh into more even quads. Then delete the unnecessary edges and close the faces. Lastly, add some window panes for this window as well. Add another cube and model out the shape of a lever. Then add a subdivision modifier to make it smooth as well. I want to add a rim around at the top of this roster, which means I'll have to apply the subdivision and boolean modifier and fix the topology. If you don't want to deal with that, you could either leave the rim out or model it as a separate object. First up, we're going to connect the doubled vertices. By pressing G two times, you can edge slide the vertices into each other, and then merge them either by pressing M and merge by distance, or enabling the auto merge option on the top right. For the vertices where the edge slide doesn't work, select them both and then press M to merge at last. Then add some loop cuts to the bottom of the toaster slip and then use the knife tool to connect them to the top. Add a support loop to the side and then bevel the edges. Then extrude the faces along the normals. After that, add another subdivision modifier on top. After that, add another subdivision modifier on top. For the toast itself, add another cube. Then add a subdivision modifier and model the shape of a toast by extruding and adding loop cuts. To save yourself some work, you can delete half of the model and add a mirror modifier. Then apply the mirror modifier and insert the front and back face. For the stairs, add another cube with a mirror modifier. Add 
get a second cube for the steps and put an array modifier on it. Then adjust the scale and put a bevel modifier on it. For some decorations, add a flower pot in front of the window. Then add a cylinder with 12 vertices to model a cactus. Now make a few variants of the cactus. And maybe even add a totally different looking one. Then add a plane for the desert. Go into edit mode, right click on it and subdivide it a hundred times. Now with proportional editing enabled, make some sand dunes. If you want, you can delete half of the plane to save performance. I'm adding a sunshell, an umbrella and a small table as decorations, but you can do whatever you want. I'm curious to see what you can come up with. To make the environment a bit more interesting, I'm adding a few rocks.
to make the environment a bit more interesting, I'm adding a few rocks. For that, I'm adding an icosphere with one subdivision. Then randomize the faces to make it look a bit more organic. Make a few different variants and then place them around the scene. Now you can split the viewport and start looking for a good camera angle. For that I'm disabling all the unnecessary icons in the top left viewport and then check the camera to view option in the side menu. Now that I have an idea on how the final composition will look, I can distribute the rest of the decorations in the environment. Now you can change into rendered view in the top left panel. Change the render engine to cycles, the device to GPU, and lower the amount of the samples. Now light your scene and maybe add a second light to get rid of some of the darker shadows. Now you can set the materials for your scene. I mostly just use the base color of the principal BSDF and sometimes increase the roughness to make the materials less shiny. You also might want to give the light a warmer color to give it more of a desert feel. To put multiple materials on one object, create a second slot and then assign the new material to the selected parts in edit mode. For the metal parts, put the metallic slider to 1.
For the toast, I used a gradient and a noise texture and then just mixed them together using a mixed RGB node and color ramps. Lastly, I decided to go with a sky texture instead of a normal light to create more realistic atmospheric lighting. To do that, switch from object to world mode in the shader editor and then as the sky texture. And here's the final result. I hope you like it. And if you choose to follow along with this tutorial, I would love to see your result. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye!